Good afternoon. Well, I tried to do a live video earlier today, and unfortunately the technological gremlins got to the bandwidth and also the PC, so I had some issues. So I uh, have reverted back to recording the video and uploading it. Um, th what I really wanted to show you is, just as I've always done, is I wanted to demonstrate the beast system in function, in action, how it functions so you can identify how it has infiltrated you. It's almost impossible for you to dredge out the enemy within you unless you see how the enemy has coerced you into doing his works. So I'm going to be posting a clip from a video here coming up shortly. And then I'm going to also in the description box below uh, have a link for the entire video because it's quite long. It's very startling to understand what the concept of, of the beast system and how it actually functions. And this is scarcity control. And this is also um, forced obsolescence, essentially. Now, what forced obsolescence is and what it does in your life is it impacts you on an impulse, on the impulse to get along with everybody, to be a part of society. So if you don't participate within the system, that you feel left out, that you feel less than, that you don't feel like you are as good as anybody else. So what happens is, is it forces you to participate to a greater degree within the beast system, that you need to make more money, participate more heavily, and be part of the society. That every single piece of electronic equipment you have, your car, your clothes, everything about the perceptive value of who you are is being interpreted by everybody else around you. And this goes back to the Vesca Pisces system where our minds, we are forcing one another to think and be and feel like everybody else. Yet that's only on the surface level because what is taking place inside of us is that the real person that is within you does not identify with these things on the outside. So we end up managing daily a constant perceptive value of how people look at us. That's what the church has become, that's what all religions have become, and that's why when you look on YouTube here and you look at the most popular videos, it's all worthless stuff. But it's so the even the person that is going to the water cooler conversations at work the following day, that if you don't know what happened in the Kardashians world, so to speak, that in the pop culture world, if you don't know what's going on, well, then you'll be seen as not really being in touch with the world. Well, that's a very good thing. If you're not in touch with this world, if you're not in touch and you don't even know who these people are and you don't know who pop culture are, are well, that's when you know that you're going to identify as to truly who you are. It doesn't matter what anybody else does in their life. And this is why I've always said that righteousness is an incredibly lonely place to be in the world, but an incredibly comfortable, warming, and nurturing place to be in the Father. It is a very different world, and it is not for everybody. If it was for everybody, I would have 10 million subscribers, but I don't. And even in the way that things operate, I can watch from, my, from the analytics on my channel, I can watch when I say something that's a little bit difficult for people to digest. They don't even want to hear it, and so they'll unsubscribe. So I'll see, I'll do a video, and I actually do an accounting before and after the video as to how many people lose and how many people, how many people lose their interest and unsubscribe. And the odd part is, is that on those very tough videos, for every 10 subscribers that I lose, I gain 20 or 30. So it's very interesting to watch the psychological aspect of the human within this world culture, within the beast system. So you can begin to start to, to identify these things around you. Because as you come into this truth, and as you begin to try to manage these things within yourself, if you don't know where these things come from, when you have a feeling that comes out of nowhere, or an urge that comes out of nowhere, and you can't understand it, you see a car and you love that color, begin to understand that something has manipulated it. 
because the color of a vehicle or the new design of a vehicle. I mean, if you go back and look at history of the of the making of General Motors and Ford, which you'll see in the video that I'm going to post in that link, you're going to see that literally for decades upon decades, they literally just changed the, exter the exterior of the car, put a different fender design on it, called it new. It was the same chassis, it was the same engine, it was the same transmission, it was the same car, but yet people would sell a car, sell their car, and buy a new one and take on even greater debt. Now, when you begin to, st to stand outside of this system, you look at those in the system and you see it as a true sickness that it's overwhelming to you that you feel such a, uh, a compelling towards their heart. You, you truly want to rescue everybody because as the truth becomes revealed and everyone begins to see that they don't own themselves, they are not sovereign, they are not in the Father. Once all of these things are revealed to them, it's going to be startling. Now you yourself and myself, we've gone through this kind of gradually, but imagine all of these truths being revealed to you in a billionth of a second, that instantly the whole world is changed. And that's what's going to happen, and it doesn't take a whole lot for that to happen. It just takes one thing to shatter the overarching understanding. I, I basically liken this to 9-11, where you could have a conversation with somebody about all these conspiracies and truths, but some reason you get to 9-11 and that it was an inside job, and they'll halt it right there, because if they have to change their opinion about that, they have to change their opinion and their understanding about everything that they've ever believed the country that they live in is all about. So in posting this video, I just wanted you to watch this if you would and really contemplate how these types of designs of these standards bodies, the standards bodies that run the motion picture industry, the recording industry, the RIAA, the MPAA, standards bodies around technology, where they force standards upon industries. And if you're not participating in the standards of those industries, then you will somehow be penalized. You're gonna see some startling things in this video where companies were penalized for making light bulbs that lasted for more than 1,000 hours. Yes, this is true, because light bulbs, when they first made, lasted forever. They never went out. But the forced obs uh, obsolescence of everything, to make everything become obsolete, your cell phone is the same thing. It forces you to accept it. Now your cell phone, they'll change the bandwidth, they'll change the frequency, they'll do whatever they have to to make that device that you purchased and supposedly own obsolete. It's incredible. I subscribe to a software to use to broadcast to all of you. It's called Zoom. And the crazy part is, is that they want $50 a month for me to be able to stream to you live through their software. But yet, every single time I stream, I have a big Zoom logo at the bottom. Like I haven't paid to remove that. And it's the same thing, that you'll go to a car dealership, you'll purchase a car, and they'll stick their logo on that you're marketing. So when you go and you buy a car and they want to keep their logo on the back of the car, Tell them to remove that unless they want to pay you a monthly fee or they want to deduct something from the price of the car for allowing you for for you allowing them to have their logo stuck on that car. The mere fact that when you buy a device, you buy a wireless device from Samsung through Verizon, you pay cash for that device, you pay a thousand dollars for that device. Yet there's all of this software that is clearly about marketing that you cannot uninstall. That's why you have to root that device, take everything off, and put a scratch version of Android on that device. You can't do that to Apple. All of these things force you into a way of living and force you into a way of thinking. And then when they want to move you and they want to change you and they want to make something popular, they force it on the entire industry. Now this is the beast. This is how he operates. And everyone voluntarily does that. And the thing that is so startling, which you'll also hear in this video and the clip that I'm going to play, is that they can get away with it in their own heart because, hey, you have free will. You have a choice to do this or to not do it. But the reality is you don't unless you want to 
live in the middle of the wilderness by yourself and not communicate. And then even then, the governmental bodies that are around today will force you to come back to their system. You're not allowed to live off of this system. It doesn't matter whether you buy property in the middle of nowhere, they're still going to charge you sales or uh, property tax and they're still going to own the mineral rights. If you live in California and like many other states and you want to put solar panels on your house and power your entire house, they won't allow it. It's against the statutes that they will make you, they will force you to power the grid and then sell the power back to you at a reduced rate. So clearly, the governmental systems of this world own the sun, own the wind, they own the water, they own the rocks. So what is your purpose here on this planet? Who are you? So when scripture says that we, uh, that we battle against rulers, principalities, a principality are ones that serve a prince. Lucifer being the prince that they serve. The masons that have built this country and that run the world, which is indicated by the masonic obelisks all over the world. So, since I couldn't get this into the live video because we had so many problems, I just wanted to upload this for you. Have you watched this video over the weekend? Hopefully, uh, Malia and I will be able to do a video tomorrow. I love you very much. I hope all of you have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy the video, and I hope to talk to you soon. One of the most important things that my father felt always in designing a product is that it made a statement. He detested products that were bland and really uh, did not you know, create any desire you know, within the consumer to inspire the purchase. Unlike the European approach of the past where they tried to make the very best product and make it last forever, meaning you bought such a fine suit of clothes that you were married in it and then buried in it, and never a chance to renew it. The approach in America is one of making the American consumer unhappy with the product that he has enjoyed the use of for a period, have him pass it on to the second-hand market, and obtain the newest product with the newest possible look. Brooks Stevens traveled all over the U.S. to promote planned obsolescence in speech after speech. His approach became the gospel of the time. Women and men alike are increasingly interested in the look of things. They eagerly give their attention to what's new and beautiful and advanced. Oldsmobile's elegant golden rocket. Sports outfit by Pat Primo of Los Angeles. Design and marketing seduced consumers into always craving the latest model. My father never designed a product to intentionally fail or become obsolete for some functional reason in a short period of time. Planned obsolescence is, is absolutely at the consumer's discretion. Uh, no one is forcing the consumer to go into the store uh, and purchase a product. Uh, you know, they go in under their own free will. That's their choice. Freedom and happiness through unlimited consumption. The American way of life in the 1950s became the foundation for the consumer society as we know it today. See, without planned obsolescence, these places wouldn't exist. 